So the first week of the grass court season done and dusted, we had a couple of changes because we did have some big names playing this week. And not too many big changes, of course. Next week is the big week when we've got Hella Queens Cup in Berlin with all the top 10 players playing, or most of them playing. Let's go have a look at who actually won the tournaments last week because we had two on the WTA and two on the ATP. So on the WTA side, we had a tournament in Nottingham and Katie Boulder coming back from a set down, winning against Pliska in the final, 4-6, 6-3, 6-2. She's having a great season this year. And over the Labima Open, Samson Over took out Andrescu, 4-6, 6-3, 7-5 to get her season back on track after a pretty poor season overall. Over on the men's side of things, starting in Stuttgart, Jack Draper beat Berrettini in the final, 3-6, 7-6, 6-4 to lift his first ATP trophy. Trophy and Dimonor. He wins the Ross Marlin Championships against Corda 6 2 6 4, and it's the second time this season that both Bolter and Dimonor have won titles in the same week. Of course, they are a couple, so really fun to see that. I'll right, see who went up in the rankings this week outside the top 10. Jack Draper. He's gone up to a career high 31 in the world after winning in Stuttgart, goes up nine spots higher than last week, and he's got a real chance of being seated at Wimbledon now if he stays in that top 30. Carolina Pliskov has also gone up in the rankings after making the final in Nottingham. She's gone up eight spots to number 42 in the world. And Bianca Andrescu, she's gone up 65 spots, so 163 in the world after making the final in Den Bosch. So, some big changes there and some big movements there for some players that did really well this week. Players that dropped down the rankings this week, Grigspor, he went down four spots number 27 in the world after failing to defend the points that he won from last year's events on the grass. Alexandrova, she's gone down four spots to number 20 in the world, also failing to defend the title that she won last year to start the grass season. And Katie Boulder, despite winning a title this week in Nottingham, she was the defending champion, so she didn't add any points to her total. Unfortunately, she goes down one spot to number 31 in the world and is in danger of not being seated at Wimbledon. So she's going to have to do well over the next few weeks. And that's what happens sometimes in the rankings. Sometimes you win a tournament, but you don't get any extra points. And sometimes you do drop down the ranks. So weird situation where you win a title and drop down, but that's what happened to Bolter. Let's start on the WTA side because we had no changes to the top 10. Triontek still at number one by a long shot with Goff at number two. Sabalink is not too far behind at number three. So in Berlin this week, it's going to be crucial for Goff to win a few matches just so that she can keep number two ranking going into Wimbledon. Rabakin comes in at number four with Pagula at five, Andrusova at six, Paulini at number seven, Zhang at number eight, Zachary at nine, and Jabur rounds out the top 10 floor this week. But besides Fionzic and Paulini, everybody else is playing this week in Berlin. So there's 500 points up for grabs. Remember, after this week, the rankings are set and the seeds will be set for Wimbledon. Over to the race of the finals now. And again, no major changes with Fiontek staying at number one. Sabalink is still at number two with Rabakin at three and Goff at four. We've got Paulini at five, Collins at number six, Zhang at at seven, Ostapenko at eight, Kostyuk at nine, and Navarro rounds out the top 10 for this week, and no changes at all, but again, with 500 points on the line this week, expect some changes to happen in the next week or so. Going over the ATP side of things now, and there were some changes, but nothing at the top, with Sinner staying at one, and Alcaraz staying at number two, Djokovic is staying at number three, with Zverev at four, Medvedev at five, Rublev stays at number six, but Alex Dimonor, after winning in Den Bosch, he goes up to a career high number seven in the world. Two spots higher than last week, pushing Rude down to number eight. Her catch goes down to number nine. And Dimitrov rounds out the top 10 for this week. So Dimonor just keeps on having the best season of his career and keeps on going up the rankings. And he is so close to top five. He's going to have to do some special things probably at Wimbledon and probably on the hard courts in the US. But he is really pushing up the rankings there and really solidifying his spot in that top 10. Over to the race of the finals now. And again, no major changes with Sinner. Still at number one and Zverev at two. Elkris comes in at three with Rude at four. Medvedev at number five. But Dimonor overtakes Pass with that win in Den Bosch. He goes up to number six, pushing Pass down to number seven. Rublev comes in at number eight. Dimitrov at number nine. And Djokovic rounds out the top ten for this week. But of course, Novak Djokovic isn't playing for the next few weeks when everybody else will be playing. So he might not stay there for long. And like I said, this week we've got two events with 500 points on the line. So this could change a little bit over the next couple of weeks. And especially with Wimbledon, that's worth 2,000 points. So expect some major changes once once that's done. So there it is. Nothing crazy in the rankings to talk about. Great for Demon Or, though. Going up the rankings. Career high for him in that top 10, number 7 in the world. And as an Aussie, we love that. And some changes outside the top 10 as well. Draper, of course. He could be seated at Wimbledon, which is huge to see him get seated, especially because a couple of years ago, he was sort of the young, unseated quality playing Novak Djokovic in the first round. And now... He almost is seeded into a Grand Slam and especially the Home Slam, which will do him a lot of favors. Saved him playing Sinner in the first round or someone like that. But let me know in the comments below. What's been the most surprising thing in the rankings this week? We did also, I guess we didn't even talk about players like Osaka, who played really well this week. She got some boosts up the rankings as well. So there are some other players, but we could only fit in a couple at the time. But they're the rankings for this week. Expect some massive changes next week, though, because we've got 500 points on the line for the ladies and the men.